why we are known as noble gases in the sense we all know that this all these gases are present in the atmosphere in very small extent and all the noble gases are monoatomic in their nature and it is a colorless odorless and tasteless and is sparing resolvable in water this zero group elements or group 18 elements are having completely filled shell in their electrons one of the radioactive element in the radiotherapy of the cancer My dear students, a warm welcome to you all. Myself is Purnima, lecturer in Department of Chemistry at Vidya Shankar University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. My dear students, in our last discussion, we were dealing with the unit called the P block elements. Under that, we have discussed about the hydrochloric acid and its chemical property and its uses. In addition to that, we also talk about what are interhalogen compounds and their preparation, physical and chemical properties of interhalogen compounds. We have discussed today. We will move on to the next topic of this unit by understanding the group 18 elements in the periodic table and their electronic configuration, occurrence, trends in their physical property, chemical property, and mainly the xenon fluorine compounds preparation of oxygen hexafluoride and xenon oxygen compounds and structure and its uses we are going to discuss in this last session okay so first we will see what are group 18 elements so in our periodic table we are very much familiar with a group 18 elements they are also known as what noble gases or inert gases or zero group elements so we will first we will see which are the elements will comes under this group the first element is helium neon argon krypton and xenon which are the element helium neon argon krypton and xenon they are known as what group 18 elements or it is also known as what noble gases noble gases or inert gases or zero group elements however some of their compounds have obtained hence they are now called as noble gases why they are known as noble gases in the sense we all know that this all these gases are present in the atmosphere in very small extent right so now it is the preparations which has been find out hence it is known as what noble gases okay all of this except red on are present in the atmosphere in very minute quantities hence they are also known as what rare gases in the atmosphere after the xenon you can see that radon which is also there and it is a only the elements which is radioactive in nature radioactive in nature except this radon the rest of the elements of this group they are also known as what rare elements because they are found in very minute quantity in the atmosphere okay among only radon is a radioactive so this is a just introduction to the group 18 i'll repeat once again remember in the group 18 in the periodic table there are many elements will be there they are helium neon argon krypton and xenon all these elements are together known as what noble gases or zero group elements or inert gases do you know why they are known as noble gases or inert gases because they does not react with any other element to form a bond that is why they are called as what noble gases or inert gases but nowadays they have been find out that they can also form a compounds with many other compounds hence it is really known as noble gases okay and all these gases are found in atmosphere in very small quantity hence it is also known as what rare gases okay 
Coming into the electronic configuration, already I have explained that this zero group elements or group 18 elements are having completely filled shell in their electrons. So it has completely filled electrons in their shell, hence it do not show any bonding with any other atoms. So we will see their electronic configuration, okay. All these elements except helium, they have highly stable sp2 that is s2p6 electronic configuration you can see that this is the outermost electronic configuration and it has eight electron so what should be the outermost electronic configuration in order to become an atom stable in the outermost it has to contain the eight electrons in order to attain the octet structure so here all the group 18 elements except helium they show the stable electronic configuration in their valence shell okay but the helium which shows 1s2 configuration and it is a stable configuration again due to this you know the elements have no tendency to lose or to gain or to share the electron with any other atoms of other elements so as such of their combining capacity and their covalency zero hence these elements are chemically inert so now you got the idea about why they are called as inert gases why they are called as inert gases because in their valence shell it has completely filled eight electron hence it do not involved in bonding with any other atom thereby it does not lose its electron does not gain its electron or does not share its electron at all that is why they are known as what zero group elements or inert gas elements okay next is occurrence already i have explained that all these elements you know except red all they are present in a in very minute quantities Okay, so all these gases except red on occurs free in the atmosphere in minute quantities that is nearly by 1% by volume. Among them, you know, the organ is a major constraint of this. The helium and neon which also found in the minerals like pinch blande and monazite and in a li etc. Whereas uh, helium, which also found in a natural gas, up to the extent of 2 to 7 percent, and xenon and radon, which is the rarest among them, coming into the radon, you know, it will be mainly obtained by decaying of radium. By decaying of radium, you know, we got a radon with a helium. This is the only method to prepare the radon from the radium okay these are the occurrence of group 18 in the nature so remember all this group elements except radon they found in the nature in very minute quantities coming into their trends in their physical property as we move along the period we will see how does this atomic radii or ionic radii or ionization energy or ionization enthalpy will increase or decrease. So first I'll go with the atomic number. We know that atomic number it is nothing but a distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell. As we move down the group, we know that as the atomic numbers will be increased as we move down the group, obviously the atomic radius will be increases as we move down the group okay coming into the ionization enthalpy and account of stable electronic configuration all these elements have very high ionization enthalpy and it is decreases as we move down the group with increasing in atomic radii but as we move down the group we all know that number of shells which is increased since the number of shells are increased, it's not so easy to pick up the electron from its outermost electronic configuration and all these electrons are completely different. Hence, you know, it will go on decreases as we move down the group and electron gain enthalpy. We will see how does this electron gain enthalpy which also alters. Even though this group 18 elements which is having completely filled electrons in their valence shell, we will see whether it will accept the electrons or not. Due to the stable electronic configuration, they have no tendency to accept electron. Hence, 
they have a large positive value so electron gain enthalpy it is very very important okay since they don't have a, any free electron to form a bond or to lose or to share with any other elements the tendency to accept an electron set is very 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 less right so that is why it has the positive electron gain enthalpy and their melting point and boiling point it is very low and their values will be go on increases as we move down the group because of the increasing in atomic number and all the noble gases are monoatomic in their nature and it is a colorless odorless and tasteless and it is sparingly soluble in water like for example we will write nitrogen oxygen as a diatomic molecule whereas the group 18 elements we write it as helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon all these elements are monovalent in nature they are not a divalent okay and they are sparingly soluble in water they are colorless odorless gases and also low melting point and low boiling point because of the weak dispersion forces which are responsible for interatomic interaction due to this reason you know the group 18 elements they have a very less boiling point and melting point next we have chemical properties of this group 18 elements group 18 elements are also termed as noble gases as they are chemically unreactive the least reactivity in this group of element that is mainly because the completely filled ns2 np6 electronic configurations in their valence shell except helium if you see that all these elements especially the helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon all these elements except this helium you know they have ns2 np6 this is the outermost electronic configurations of the group 18 elements since that in the outermost shell it has completely filled electrons that shows a very least reactivity and they have very high ionization enthalpy and high electropositive gain enthalpy they shows what positive electron gain enthalpy and their ionization enthalpy which is also very high and xenon reacts with platinum hexafluoride and to form a platinum hexafluoride xenon complex okay this is a complex of the xenon once it is react with the platinum hexafluoride and xenon forms a number of compounds mainly with the highly electronegative elements like fluorine and oxygen so if you see that group 18 elements in that only in the xenon which shows a few reactions with the fluorine and oxygen with the other elements we will understand more about this in the next slide okay that is xenon fluorine compounds so already we have understood that group 18 elements it has the completely filled electrons in their valence shell the reactivity which is very very less but except this elements you know we have only the element known as xenon which can easily react with the fluorine and chlorine or with any other elements to form a complex compound so if we will understand in detail how does this xenon can also react with the fluorine or also can react with oxygen to form a complex compound okay in 1962 the n butlet noticed that the platinum hexafluoride is a powerful oxidizing agent which can combines with the molecular oxygen to form a ionic compound that is known as o2 plus and pt f6 minus what does he observe he observed that when the platinum hexafluoride even though it is a complex when it is react with the oxygen you know it will got converted into o2 plus platinum hexafluoride and it indicates that platinum hexafluoride can oxidizes the oxygen 
that is from O2 to the O2 plus. Okay. Similarly, once he got this reactions, he compared the oxygen with the xenon with the sum of the similarity. We will understand which are the similarity he observed with the oxygen as well as with the xenon. Okay. The first ionization enthalpy of xenon is 1. 1070 kilojoules per mole and it is also very much closer to the first ionization enthalpy of the oxygen that is 1166 kilojoules per mole and molecular diameter of the oxygen and the atomic radii of the xenon which is also almost similar on this assumption the Bertlet treated the xenon with a platinum hexafluoride in the gaseous state and he observed that when a xenon treated with a platinum hexafluoride again the xenon which will be oxidized to xenon plus state. This indicates that the platinum hexafluoride is a very good oxidizing agent which oxidizes the xenon from xenon to the xenon plus state. So this was first discovered by the Bartlett in the year 1962. What does he observe? So first he took the xenon hexafluoride and he treated with the oxygen. Once he treated with the oxygen, he observed that the oxygen from the O2 state which has been oxidized to get a plus state that is O2 plus state which has been oxidized. Once he got this product, he understood that this oxygen which is also shows the similarity with the xenon. What are the similarity he observed? He saw the ionization enthalpy of the first ionization enthalpy of the xenon with oxygen which is also very much closer. Then atomic radii as well as with the molecular diameter which is also very closer to each other. After looking at with this observation, he treated the xenon with the platinum hexafluoride and finally he got the product where our xenon which has been oxidized to xenon plus one state. Thereby, he come to know that xenon can also took place in the chemical reactions. Okay, thereby it forms a xenon fluorine complexes. Xenon fluorine compounds will be also goes like this. We will understand more about this by looking at the different reactions. Okay. Xenon forms a three binary fluoride. Already I have explained that how does he treat it is how does he took the xenon for reacting with the fluorine. So which are the three binary fluoride that is xenon difluoride, xenon tetrafluoride and xenon hexafluoride. These are the three types of the binary fluorides which has been formed from the xenon by the direct reactions of elements under the appropriate experimental conditions. So here we have a reactions. So here I have taken out the xenon which is allowed to react with the fluorine. Remember I have taken out the xenon in excess quantity and the temperature around 673 Kelvin and the pressure around 1 bar pressure you know it forms what xenon difluoride or difluorido xenon com complex will be formed. This indicates that the xenon can be also involved in a chemical reaction thereby it combines with the fluorine to form a xenon fluorine complexes. Okay, if you take xenon and fluorine in 1 is to 5 ratio at the pressure around 7 bar and the temperature around 873 Kelvin, he got xenon tetrafluoride. Again, this reaction's conditions which has been altered, even though it is altered, xenon forms a xenon fluorine complexes. Coming into the last reaction, here xenon and fluorine compositions will be altered. It is 1 is to 20 ratio and you can see that the pressure which is very high. It is from 60 to 70 bar and the temperature around, around 573 Kelvin. Again it forms a xenon oxyfluoride. By all this reaction we can say that the xenon can form a 3 binary products of fluorides. It may be by tetra and hexa of xenon fluorido complexes and by altering the reactions conditions we can get the different xenon fluorine complex compounds okay and 
preparations of xenon oxygen let us understand how to prepare this xenon oxygen hexafluoride okay xenon hexafluoride was prepared by the interaction of xenon tetrafluoride and o2f2 at the temperature around 143 kelvin so here we have xenon tetrafluoride which has been treated with o2f2 at 143 kelvin you got what xenon hexafluoride with the release of oxygen okay that is xenon difluoride xenon tetrafluoride xenon hexafluoride are also known as what fluorinating agents because they are very good oxidizing agents okay so xenon f2 is hydrolyzed to give a xenon hf and o2 if you take only the xenon difluoride if you do the hydrolysis with water it can give us to the xenon with the formation of hydrogen halide with the formation of oxygen so xenon fluorides react with the fluorido ion acceptors to form a cationic complexes and fluoride ion donors to form a fluorido anions you can see that the xenon difluoride which has been treated with pfi to form a cation complexes of xenon that is xenon f plus and also it forms a fluoro anions this is a fluoro cations and these are the fluoro anions okay similarly you can see that if it is reacting with the metal halides it forms a metal with a fluorido anions by all these reactions we can conclude that xenon can react with the oxygen thereby it forms a xenon oxygen hexafluoride complexes next is xenon oxygen compounds we will see few more xenon oxygen complexes also the xenon tetrafluoride and xenon hexafluoride upon hydrolysis it gives what xenon trioxygen you can say so xenon tetrafluoride upon oxidation so upon hydrolysis it gives rise to the xenon and zeo3 4hf that is hydrogen fluoride with the release of oxygen similarly you can see that xenon hexafluoride as well as with the xenon tetrafluoride both will undergo hydrolysis with the water and give rise to the xenon oxygen compound xenon oxygen compounds will be formed and with the release of what hydrogen fluoride so by all these reactions you can clearly understand even that xenon tetrafluoride and xenon oxyfluoride if you take it give rise to the a uh, two different compounds of xenon with the oxygen so which is a new compounds of the xenon with the oxygen okay upon partial hydrolysis we will see how does the xenon hexafluoride can give rise to the oxyfluorides or xenon oxyfluoride of four types and xenon o2f2 so you can see that this are the xenon hexafluoride okay upon partial hydrolysis it give rise to what zeof4 and zeo2f2 with the formation of what 4hf that is hydrogen fluoride so by all these reactions we can clearly understand that the xenon tetrafluoride xenon oxyfluoride which are the two different compounds which entirely give us to the new compounds so with the xenon with the oxygen next is structure of this xenon fluoride that is zeof2 which is a linear zeof4 xeof4 is a square planar xeof6 is a distorted structure whereas krypton fluoride is known but the not true compound of helium neon and organs which has been known so we will see this is a xeof and this is the first compounds of the xenon with the fluorine that is in a linear shape and you can see that it has three lone pairs of electron and it has two bond pairs of electron similarly if you see that the xenon f4 xenon f4 which consists of 
two lone pairs of electron and we have a four bond pairs of electron. Similarly, we have xenon F6, right? And it is a distorted octahedral structure because of the presence of one lone pairs of electron and you can see that there are six bond pairs of electrons will be there. And we have one more compound that is xenon oxy that is xenon with the oxygen with the fluoride complexes and it has a square pyramidal in shape and even though it is having a square pyramidal shape it has one lone pair of electron we have one more compounds with the xenon with the oxygen that is zeo3 which is pyramidal in shape and it consists of one lone pair of electrons and a three bond pairs of electrons next is lastly the uses of this group 18 elements. First, I'll go with the helium, which is the first member in the group 18. Since the helium which is light and inflammable, it is used to fill the balloons as well as with the filling of airships as well as in the balloon, we use a helium because it is a inflammable gas and also it is very light. And it is used as a divalence for the oxygen and used by the drivers for the respiration because it is not soluble in the blood even under the high pressure. That is why you know the sky drivers and all they will use the helium gas cylinder as a divalence with the oxygen and it is used in the research work to maintain the low temperature and it is used in the production of inert atmosphere and it is filled in the tubes of aeroplane tires and it is used to produce a powerful superconducting magnets used in a NMR spectroscopy and in a magnetic resonance imaging and it is used for the food preservation. These are the uses of the first elements in the group 18 that is helium. Next we have neon. Neon will be used to fill for the discharge lamp and in the signs. Hope you know that when you are traveling for the distance places, uh, they will put the signs with the neons. So because it forms a orange, orange red color so that it will be visible to the drivers for the even with the longer distances, they can see the distances, how much it is there to reach their places. In that sign boards, you know, they'll use a neon as well as in the discharge lamp, they'll use a neon lights and it is visible from the long distances and even visible through the fog. Okay, and the safety devices for protecting the electrical instrument and neon bulbs are used in botanical garden as well as in the greenhouse. Especially if it is comes to the organ, okay, widely used for filling the incandescent metal filaments for the electrical bulbs and it is also used as a rectifiers and fluorescent bulbs and to produce the inert atmosphere during the welding and for the extraction of the metals, you know, we use a organ. Last is krypton and a xenon. There is no significant use of krypton and a xenon will be absorbed, but still it, it will be used for filling the incandescent metal filaments in the electrical bulbs and they are considered as a superior to the organ for this purposes. So if you compare the organ with the krypton and xenon, it is considered as more superior and it is used to fill the incandescent material for the bulbs. And krypton 85 will be used to determine the thickness of the metal sheets and in the plastic sheets and used to regulating the voltage of the electrical bulbs. And coming to the last one that is red oil used as a one of the radioactive element in the radiotherapy of the cancer and used to check the defects in the steel castings. Okay, these are the important uses of the noble gases which is there in the last group of the periodic table. So by this, I finish off with the group 18 elements by the session. So wherever you are not understanding, please pause the video and try to write and write the reactions with the oxygen, with the fluorine as well as with the xenon, with the oxygen compounds. It is very, very important for the examination point of view. I'll come back with a new unit. 
Till then, take care and be safe. Thank you.